And then he starts saying that she's just trying to clout chase. And I'm like, sir, what clout? We barely know you. <laughs> What's up, y'all? It's your girl, Roxy, with Roxy Says, and we're gonna talk about it. So I caught myself watching The Love is Blind season four after the altar special. It was three episodes. It was pretty boring, but I still have a lot to say about it as usual. Now, it wasn't as messy and dramatic as I would have liked, but we got a little something, okay? So let's talk about it. But before we do, do not forget to hit like, comment, and subscribe. We just hit 700 subscribers. Oh my God, we about to be at 1K. So make sure you join the party and I appreciate all of you for watching. So as the episode opens up, they let us know that we are approaching everyone's one year anniversary. So y'all remember the couples? We got Brett and Tiff. We got Zach and Bliss. We have Kwame and Chelsea. And that's it. That's the three married couples. Now I'll start off by saying this. Kwame and Chelsea... They shut us up, huh, didn't they? <laughs> they like, we still together. I still feel that Kwame is faking it, and I'm, I'll get into that in a bit. But I'm surprised that they're still together at this point, honestly. So as the episode opens up, we see Brett and Tiff. Clearly, Brett is still taking Tiffany on those really fancy and romantic dates. I love that for her, and I wish that for everybody, okay? They let us know that Tiffany moved to Portland from Seattle because Brett works in Portland. Remember, he works for Nike. Tiffany says she is in her soft girl era, okay? She is all about self-care, wellness, everything that she can do that'll bring her peace. That is what she is focusing on, and I love that for her. Next, we see Zach and Bliss, and those two are still together. If you saw my previous reviews, you know that I love Zach and Bliss. They are two peas in a pod. They're quirky. They're weird. They just go together. And even though I didn't like the fact that Bliss this was Zach's second choice because remember he went with Irina first. After the reunion, I was sold on them because the way that they were on stage, backing each other up, they were on one accord. I, I was like, oh, <laughs> they're rocking together. And watching them now, those two are in love. So we see that they're at a doctor's appointment. Why did they have us thinking that Zach and Bliss were preparing to have a child? But it turns out that they were just at the vet and Zach has some allergies, okay? So we see Zach and Bliss and Kwame and Chelsea and they're going to, I don't know, a baseball game because Chelsea is throwing the ball, child. I don't know nothing about sports. <laughs> but Chelsea and Kwame are there to throw the ball. And we learn more information about Kwame and Chelsea and Zach and Bliss's relationship, friendship. So they only live seven minutes apart. They actually celebrated their sixth year anniversaries together. And when they travel, oftentimes they share the same hotel room. Yeah, no, we're all adults here. I'm sure we can all afford to have our own separate hotel rooms. I don't like it. <laughs> I don't like it at all. No. So listen, I know at the end of the day, our opinions don't matter. These people don't know us, okay? But I'm telling you, I still do not see it for Chelsea and Kwame. Chelsea, to me, she's still in love. She's in La La Land. I always felt that Chelsea just wanted to be in love. She just wanted to be married to somebody. And whoever was willing to be her husband... That's all she needed, okay? I do think that Chelsea loves Kwame. She cares about him. I think that she is in love with him. But Kwame, to me, it's still giving fake. It's still giving acting. The only difference is I feel that Kwame saw the comments, okay? He saw the videos, and he learns how to look more believable. But I feel like he's just going with the motions and doing the things that he thinks someone in love would do. You get what I'm saying? And there's multiple times within these three episodes that I feel like when Kwame kissed Chelsea, he looked at the camera like, here, damn, I kissed her. <laughs> like, you see, I'm kissing her. Hey, I love her. I don't believe it. <laughs> Moving on. So now we see Micah and she's meeting up with Paul's mom, Elizabeth. Elizabeth loves her some Micah a little bit. Too much, if I'm being completely honest. Micah says that she doesn't want to make things uncomfortable by being besties with her ex fiance's mother. And Elizabeth is like, girl, I don't give a damn. Okay, I don't care what Paul got going on. 
I love you. <laughs> I love you. I want you to be my daughter-in-law or my girlfriend. I don't know. I, the vibes the vibes were giving everything. I, I'm not even sure. But Micah says that her having this relationship with Elizabeth validates that her and Paul actually had something real. They discuss the comments that Paul made about him not being able to see Micah as a mother. And of course, Micah doesn't agree with those feelings. But she feels that that's something that Paul could have at least had a conversation with her about before saying that at the altar. So Elizabeth lets Micah Micah know that Paul is actually talking to somebody and she can't really define talking. And I'm like, yeah, Elizabeth, a lot of people can't. <laughs> what is talking? Like, yeah, we talking. That could mean we just chatting. We just texting. That could mean we talking on the phone. That could mean we being intimate. Like talking can mean so many things. But Elizabeth tells Micah, look, don't worry about it. I will break that bitch's kneecaps. OK, <laughs> Elizabeth is a little, she is a little cuckoo. She's a little cuckoo. It's really funny because her and Paul are so different. Yeah, girl, but Elizabeth says she will bust that girl's kneecaps. All Micah got to do is say the word and it's done. <laughs> Next, we see that Jackie and Josh are still together. Oh, Jackie says, I saw y'all dragging me on the internet. Okay, it's been a tough year. Y'all been dragging me. Y'all been dragging my man in his cauliflower ears. Okay, but we're still here and we're still together. And I'm like, yes, girl, I was one of those people dragging you. And and she says she don't care what we say about Josh's ears because she be licking them every night. I will say that Jackie and Josh make a way better couple than Jackie and Marshall. Jackie and Josh, they have like this really playful, very non-serious relationship. Josh is always trying to be funny and he's really not. But I guess Jackie likes that. She entertains it. They just go together a lot better than Jackie and Marshall. We see that they're actually moving into their first place together. And this is a huge step for them. And it makes them feel vindicated because they were able to prove everybody wrong. And part of me feels like that might be a big reason why they're still together. Because to me, it doesn't give love. Like on either part, I don't see Josh looking into Jackie's eyes like he's in love. I don't see Jackie looking into Josh's eyes like she's in love. Not the way we see Brett and Tiff and Zach and Bliss and Chelsea and Kwame. Well, you know, Chelsea only, not Kwame. You get what I'm saying? Next, we see Paul and he's cooking with his mommy and he's gushing over his new girlfriend. And I think that's kind of messed up because Micah is going to let us know that they're still texting. So they're still texting and they're still talking, but he's dating somebody else. Paul, mm-mm-mm. I don't like that. I don't like that. Paul says that after the altar, him and Micah actually did spend some time together and everything was going pretty well. But Micah said that she didn't want to date him anymore. Remember, they live in two different places. But Micah said, when I'm back in town, you know, we could get together and we could date. And Paul is like, yeah, girl, no, <laughs> that's not how that goes. OK, you don't date someone only when it's convenient for you. You're supposed to make that person. If you love that person, you're supposed to make them a priority. So they stopped dating after that. But Elizabeth tells Paul that if he wants Micah back, he needs to beg, baby, OK? He needs to be outside in the middle of the street dancing and singing in the rain like all those R&B videos. And I'm like, um, Elizabeth, did you not watch the season? Micah is terrible. <laughs> Micah is not that great. So I'm not sure why Elizabeth is so stuck on Micah. Maybe because she just looks like the younger version of her. That's why she connects so well to Micah. But girl, Micah is not it. What's going on? So we see the three married couples meet up for their one year anniversary. It's a beautiful dinner and everybody looks so amazing. I really love to see the ladies get together, you know, Bliss, Chelsea and Tiffany, because you can tell that they have a genuine friendship. And how could y'all not have such a strong bond after going through this like once in a lifetime experience together? I just love seeing the ladies together. So everyone is talking about married life. Brett and Tiff, they speak on all of the trips that they've been taking. They've been traveling a lot, child. And out of nowhere, Chelsea gets emotional and she starts crying and she says that she wants to acknowledge and thank Kwame for everything that he's sacrificed in their relationship because she knows that before they got together, Kwame loved to travel. He was all over the place. And now that they're together, he can't do that much anymore because she has to stay where she's at for work. And even in this scene, she's tearing up and she's emotional and she's like, baby, I love you. I appreciate you. And he just looks at her and he's like, yeah, Kwame, <laughs> I'm not going to go in too much, but I'm telling you, it's mm, 
Mm -mm. And remember, Kwame was complaining about all of the compromising that he had to do. So we can see even in this scene, he still holds a little bit of contempt with his relationship with Chelsea because he still feels like he's sacrificing and compromising. Even though in the little confessional with Chelsea, he says he doesn't feel like he's missing out on anything. His facial expression and his response to what she said says something completely different to me. Let me know what you think below. And at the end of this episode, we see Zach and Bliss say that they want to have some type of like fantasy football game where everybody can get together, play and just have a good time. All right. So now we're on to episode two. We see Tiff and Brett and they actually meet up with Marshall and his girlfriend. I think her name is Shay. Shay or Shy. So they've been together for a year. And Marshall says that she is the perfect girl for him and he's so in love. Now, I spoke about her in a previous video about Marshall. Okay, I broke Marshall down because I know that y'all love Marshall. I know that y'all think that Marshall is a little angel. I see through Marshall. He is not as innocent as he wants everybody to believe. And I'm going to stand 10 toes down on that, okay? Because it's funny how he's so in love with this girl and how she's the perfect person for him. But in a previous interview, he wasn't trying to claim that girl. It wasn't until his tweets came out with him being colorist. It wasn't until those tweets came out that he revealed her. It was like, oh, hey, look, I'm not colorist. I got a black girlfriend. But before that, he was not openly claiming her. And in an interview, he was actually saying that he was about to break up with her because he wanted to explore his newfound fame, okay? So the fact that he's like, oh, I'm so in love, I'm so in love, it's like, all right, maybe he's in love now, but don't make it seem like you've been in love with her from the time that you were with her because that is not the energy that you were giving, Marshall. But the girl is really sweet. I think she's beautiful. She's a doctor. I think that her and Marshall do vibe well together. Next, we see Micah and Shelby. Why, why is Shelby on our screens? Netflix, y'all be trolling us because y'all know we don't like Shelby. Why did y'all, why is she on our TV screens? Why? But Micah says, look, that's my best friend and I'm gonna stick beside her. We've been besties for 10 years, so she ain't going nowhere. <laughs> Pretty much, that's what Micah says. Then Irina shows up. Why is Irina, why is she here? I'm like, oh, so it's just a mean girls link up, right? Irina does ask Micah how's everything going with her and Paul because she's like if you and Paul ain't working out pass him to me because you know I was trying to get on that way before <laughs> I'm just playing y'all she didn't say all that but she did ask Micah what the update was between her and Paul Micah lets the girls know that she's really confused because Paul is talking to another girl but he's still texting her so we see Jackie meet up with one of her old friends from the pod. Her name is Casey. And we actually find out that this is the woman that Marshall dated shortly after he broke up with Jackie. Remember in the reunion, Jackie was saying, I didn't give the ring back. Marshall actually wanted the ring back because he wanted to give it to somebody else. Yeah, this is the girl that he wanted to give the ring to. But she says that the relationship was short-lived and she had to block him because every other week, Marshall would be texting her apologizing. And she's like, Marshall, enough. It's okay. <laughs> We're good, okay? But she also says that she feels like Marshall was a little bit dismissive of their relationship and he tried to downplay how serious it was because he didn't want to give the impression that he did the same exact thing that Jackie and Josh did. So next we see Amber and Amber was my favorite girl in the beginning of their season. I loved Amber. And it makes a lot of sense that Amber and Bliss are cool because they're both two sweetie pies. But Paul picked Micah over Amber. OK, so Bliss tells Amber that her and Zach are about to head off to Europe. Her dad is paying for the honeymoon. He had told them, if y'all make it a year, I'll pay for your honeymoon. I think that's really sweet. So Bliss's dad clearly loves and cares about his daughter. I just hope that since we've last seen him, he's learned how to better communicate with Bliss and how to not make her feel like she's a child who's incapable of making her own decisions. I hope that he respects her more now. So child, it's Chelsea's birthday. OK, so everyone is at Chelsea's mom's house. And Chelsea's mom's Bob is still bobbing. So we see Kwame's sister, Deborah and his brother, they come over. I really love how Chelsea and Kwame's family are intertwining. We still don't see his mother. We still don't see his mother, but I do like that they spend a lot of time together. We can definitely see that Kwame's sister and Chelsea, they have a strong bond. Those two ladies love each other. And Kwame's sister was teaching Chelsea how to make some jollof rice. Is it jollof? Jollof? Chelsea asked Kwame to tell everyone the story of when he first met his mother. So Kwame lets everyone know that he didn't meet his mom until he was eight years old. Him and his siblings were raised by their uncle. 
And the first time that he met his mom was at JFK Airport, and she pulled out three Tupperwares, and she gave each of them some jollof rice. So the first time he had that rice was also the first time that he met his mother. So clearly, that's really sentimental to him. Chelsea lets us know that she gave Kwame's mom a card. Remember when she went over to Kwame's family's house for Thanksgiving? Chelsea said that she slid a card under the door for Kwame's mom to read. And in the letter, it was really heartfelt. And she went into great detail about how much she loves Kwame. And she says that she knows in her heart that Kwame's mother now understands her love for her son, Kwame. And I'm like, girl, no. <laughs> now, Chelsea, I am sorry to break it to you, but I don't care how much jollof rice you make, that lady don't like you. I'm just going to tell you because Kwame not going to tell you, uh, Kwame's sister not telling you, and Kwame's brother not telling you. So I'll tell you, okay? If you slid a card under the door where you poured your heart out to this lady about how much you love her son, and y'all didn't even speak after that, she didn't call you, like, oh, hey, girl, I got the card that you wrote. She didn't call you or reach out to you. Girl, she don't see it for you. She just doesn't. I feel like the only way that Kwame's mother might come around is if she has a kid and grandma wants to meet the kid, okay? I think that's the only way that maybe her and Kwame's mom will be able to bond and develop some type of relationship. And even in that case, if I was Chelsea, Kwame's mom, she gonna have to pull up and we gonna have to have a conversation and get cool before my kid could even go to your house. She not gonna come picking up my kid and she don't even speak to me. No, we not doing that, okay? I just gave Kwame and Chelsea an imaginary kid, but I'm just saying that's probably the only way that she'll put that wall down and actually try to develop a relationship with Chelsea. I do commend Chelsea because clearly it's important to her that Kwame's mom knows that she really loves her son. We know that Chelsea loves Kwame and all she wants to do is have a strong relationship with Kwame's mother because Chelsea is so close with her own family. But I don't know, it's not looking good. If not much has changed since the last time we saw Chelsea and Kwame, I don't have much faith that anything will improve anytime soon between Chelsea and Kwame's mom. So it's finally game day and we see everyone showing up. Kwame got on some poom poom shorts. I'm like, I know Chelsea bought them tiny ass shorts for you. I'm not even gonna try to explain the game or who was playing what position. I don't know. I just know that Tiffany, she was doing her thing on the field, okay? And I thought that the team names were really cute. We got the Pod Squad and the Golden Goblets. Cute names, right? So everyone is pretty much there. And then we see Jackie and Josh show up. Dum, dum, dum. <laughs> so now we get a couple of these side conversations. We see Paul and Amber and they're chatting about the coincidence that they're both moving to San Diego soon. Paul admits that he's been avoiding Amber and just any situation that can be taken out of context because he is scarred for life after getting dragged. Remember, everyone thought, well, not everybody, but remember, there was this whole scandal about him possibly touching one of Micah's friend's butts on the day of the wedding, right? So he's like, y'all not gonna catch me slipping, okay? I'm avoiding everybody. Don't talk to me. Don't come near me. Don't touch me. <laughs> we see Chelsea and Micah have a short convo and this convo had me cracking up, okay? So Micah tells Chelsea that she just moved here and Chelsea's like, oh, you just moved here? Okay, well, I don't think your soulmate is here. And Micah's like, no, I don't either. But tell me, where's my soulmate? And Chelsea's like, I don't know, bitch. Somewhere in Brazil, okay? Just far away from my man. <laughs> Chelsea, I know that was shade, okay? I, I peeped that. But Micah does thank Chelsea for the way that she handled the situation. Because remember, things did get messy between the two. But they hug, so it seems like everything is good between them. But just know, Chelsea will whoop Micah's ass over Kwame, okay? Chelsea is not playing about her man, her man, her man. Know that. So we see that the pod squad team wins. Hooray, hooray, hooray. And now we get on to the after party, what we really care about, okay? This is where things turn up a little bit. So everybody is showing up. Micah is avoiding Paul. Her friends are like, you don't want to talk to him? Just talk to him and break the ice. She was like, yeah, no, I'm good. When Marshall arrives, he actually daps up Josh. So I'm like, okay, that's good. Everything seems to be cool between those two, at least. Marshall actually goes to Jackie and he pulls her aside and asks if they can have a conversation. And she's like, yeah, let's have a conversation. So Marshall starts off the conversation with an apology. And he says that he's sorry because he feels like he really pressured Jackie. And he says that even even when it was clear that things weren't working out. And I'm like, yes, Marshall. Okay, I really love that. Some self-awareness. He was able to see like this girl made it clear that she didn't want to be with you and you were still pushing it. And I feel like part of that apology came because Marshall realized that 
it wasn't really Jackie. He wasn't really in love with Jackie. He just wanted to make it to the altar with anybody. And I think the fact that he quickly wanted to propose to someone else also confirms that. But I know y'all think Marshall is an angel. But like I said in my previous video, it wasn't even about Jackie. Marshall was not madly in love with Jackie. He was in love with the way that she looked. He was in love with the way that she looked. But more importantly to him, he just wanted to make it to the altar. Jackie also apologizes and she says that she's sorry for not being more open with him and more compassionate during the process. Because when it comes to Josh and Jackie, I don't think, well, for me, the issue wasn't that she got with Josh. The issue for me was that she was really cold and callous to Marshall. And I feel like that was unwarranted. But yeah, she tells Marshall that he deserves everything and more. And they're both wishing each other the best. It was just a really nice and wholesome conversation. They get up, they give each other a hug. And I'm like, I'm proud of you guys. Good job. Aww. But yeah, that conversation definitely showed a lot of growth. And it's nice to see that Jackie and Marshall are in a better place. Next, we see Irina take Amber aside to apologize and she could have saved this shit honestly so Irina tells Amber that she's sorry for everything that she did in the house and then she has the nerve to say that she didn't know that Amber was crying girl and Amber is like girl it's okay <laughs> don't worry about it I'm not losing sleep over the situation but you know that I was crying just be better <laughs> just be a better person okay that's the same thing that they told Irina at the reunion to be a better person Clearly, Irina has learned nothing because she really went to apologize to Amber and lied. Girl, you could have kept that apology. So we see Micah and Paul and they have a conversation because Micah wants clarity on what's going on with them, especially after learning that Paul has been dating someone different. It's a really short conversation. Pretty much at the end of the day, Micah says, look, I can't be friends with you because I still have feelings for you. And also you're dating somebody else. So they just agree to close this chapter in their lives and move on. So Jackie's friend lets her know that Monica is on the way. And Jackie's like, oh, no, Monica's on the way. We got to leave. And I'm like, oh, my God, who's Monica? Who the hell is Monica? So we learn that Monica is actually the person that Josh proposed to in the pods. And to me, it kind of seems like she was like a rebound engagement. One of those, let's get more camera time. So let's just get engaged engagements. That's the vibe that I got. And immediately when Josh and Monica met each other, you can see that Monica was like, what the f did I do? <laughs> she was not feeling it. And she is the one who broke off the engagement. But Monica says that her, Jackie and Josh were actually really cool for a long period of time. They would hang out together. And Jackie was really her best friend. But Monica says that everything was all hunky-dory until she posted that she and Josh had gotten engaged. So it seems like Jackie and Josh didn't want Monica to talk about her engagement, but she's like, I'm here and I'm going to talk about it. And I think that Monica should be able to tell her story. She was on the show like everybody else. She had her own experience and she should be able to talk about it. So the two ladies sit down and clearly they're both hurt. We can see that Jackie loves Monica and Monica loves Jackie. And I really wish that we got to see a little bit more of that friendship throughout the season. Jackie lets Monica know. She's like, look, girl, your story and your experience is valid and you should be able to tell that story. But I just felt like you were being messy. But then Jackie also says that it was the blogs that were being messy. So I'm like, are you mad at Monica or are you mad at the blogs? You're going to have to differentiate because those are two completely different things things. Monica tells Jackie, look girl, I don't care about Josh. My main purpose was not to let the world know that I was engaged to Josh. I just wanted to let them know that I got engaged. I wanted to let them know about my experience on the show. But at the end of the day, fuck Josh. Okay. Y'all probably not even going to be together. I want my friend back. I don't want to lose you. And I'm willing to fight for this friendship. And I was like, oh my God. But in Jackie's confessional, she's saying, I don't care if my man is right or wrong. I'm going to stand by my man. Jackie, you should be able to tell your man when he's wrong. I'm sure he tells you when you're wrong, right? You should be able to do the same. Monica really wants to prove to Jackie that she was not being messy. She actually sent the information to Jackie before she sent it to the blogs to just give Jackie a heads up and let her know like, hey girl, I'm about to reach out to these blogs and let them know my experience. So Jackie was able to see everything beforehand, but she's still upset. So Monica says, I don't even know why Josh is mad at me. Matter of fact, call him over here so we can have a conversation together. And the conversation was really calm until Josh came over. 
When Josh came over, I literally had to turn the volume down on my television because he came over all loud. The hands was moving. He was just doing too much as usual. So Josh says that his issue is he doesn't like the way that Monica and her friends were responding in the comments talking about, "Mm, yeah, Josh. Okay, Josh. Well, she can't control what other people write. Like she can't control what other people write. And then he starts saying that she's just trying to clout chase. And I'm like, sir, what clout? We barely know you. (laughs) So who was she trying to clout chase off of? just by telling her story. Are you serious? And at that point, Monica blows up and she's like, Jackie, I don't even know how you deal with this dude. He's like a damn six-year-old. He's childish as hell. So Jackie gets up and she walks away. She doesn't want to deal with the stress and she doesn't want to deal with the drama. And I honestly feel like in this scene especially, we can see that Jackie, she's kind of simmered down, right? From her conversation with Marshall, that went really well. And even in this situation, I do feel like she should have spoke up more like for her friend and for the situation. But we can also see that she just really didn't want to be in any drama. Josh was the drama in this situation. He escalated the entire conversation. So Jackie walks out and Josh follows her out. And she's like, look, I just wanted to come here and just see everybody. I just want to be with my man and just chill. And Josh is like, all right, so do you want to go home? And she's like, yeah, I want to go home. And in her confessional, she says, you know, at some point you have to realize when something just isn't good for you. And when she was saying this, I thought that she was about to break up with Josh. (laughs) I thought she was about to break up with Josh. And I was like, okay, good girl. But that's not what happened. I think she means that she was just breaking up with the show and with the experience and she was over it and she was just ready to go back home. So that's how that night ends. And in all honesty, I hope that Jackie kind of wakes up and realizes that just because she's in a relationship with Josh, that does not make him right all the time. And I hope that she knows that she can speak up for herself because when she was with Marshall, oh, she was speaking up. Okay, so keep that same energy. Let Josh know when he's being a damn idiot, because in this situation, he was being a damn idiot. So in the next thing we see Kwame and he's playing soccer. We see Chelsea and her dad and they're watching him play his game. And I thought that that was really cute. We see Zach and Bliss and they're on their honeymoon and they're dancing. They're so cute and corny to me. I just love Zach and Bliss. (laughs) I love those two. And as the episode closes, we just see everyone living their best life and all of the couples giving their words of wisdom and advice on what it takes to have a strong and successful marriage. But we also see that they tease the next season of Love is Blind and I will be here reviewing it. So make sure you hit like, comment and subscribe so that you do not miss my videos because we're going to have to talk about all of it. And that's the episode, y'all. Tell me what y'all think below. Are you surprised that any of the couples are still together? Who's your favorite couple? Do you see what I see when it comes to Kwame? Okay, let me know all your thoughts below. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see y'all next time. Bye! Bye. 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 B